really sorry for going MIA for so long. Um, I was going through a lot, to be honest, and uh, I had to seek professional help. So I got into therapy for two months and I'm all better now. Um, and I got back to my reading. Coincidentally, I began reading the most fitting book I could ever have picked up uh, while, you know, getting back up and recovering, basically. Um, this is the ultimate guide that, I kid you not, will open your eyes and blow your mind with its inevitable truths. Um, the kind that we're not really taught um, and the kind that we need to hear every day. I always used to be skeptical whenever I hear someone go, oh, this book changed my life. Now, I'm the one who will, without exaggeration, say, this book is changing my life. During my reading of the book, I have let it reshape how I see myself, what I think of myself, and what I say about and to myself and in relation to others. I literally sat down, dug deep, and truthfully answered all the questions that the author asked. It's not exactly the type of book that you want to breeze through. It's the type that you want to take your time with to soak up all the gems that it has to offer and really do the inner work. Um, it's not that it's complex in its subject matter or anything like that. It just felt for me that um, if you want to get the most out of it, you know, like I had to microdose on it and journal every now and then to reflect on whatever, whatever it is that I had to like unravel or, or learn. So without further ado, I present to you this beautiful guidebook called Welcome Home by Najwa Zebian, um, a Lebanese-Canadian writer. Now, the whole book is built upon a metaphor, and I don't mean that in a way to take away uh, from the value of the book or anything. It's just that the entire book is basically predicated on the notion of an inner home, or as she calls it, a home for your soul. Uh, Najwa not only generously gives us the tools that we require to build this inner home, but shows us how to do so by sharing her personal experiences that have taught her so much about herself, uh, her growth journey, and the work that it takes. So this home has to have two vital components uh, as its main foundation or base, just as any other home. Um, in this uh, context, uh, those two uh, components are self-awareness and self-acceptance. And once that base is set up, she goes on to the different rooms inside of the house, uh, each room representing a theme that is discussed in length uh, in each chapter. I'll be going through the gist of each chapter and picking out quotes that I really resonated with, just because there's so much value that one can get from the book. Um, but I know I'll barely uh, scratch the surface. Now, the first chapter is titled Building a Foundation, and it breaks down the concept of having a sturdy foundation for your home and how critical that is. Uh, what is needed is, as I said, self-acceptance and self-awareness. In other words, fully knowing who you are and your worth and how that sense of self-worth should be stemming from within your core, from inside of you and not from other people. Because if we place our self-worth in other people's homes, it comes crashing down when they leave us. Another way to say this is that if we only liked ourselves through other people's eyes and felt ourselves worthy because they made us feel so, what happens if they leave us or abandon us? Our worth suffers and we won't like ourselves anymore. Uh, the self-acceptance means that we should accept ourselves as we are, flaws and all, and not base that worthiness on an external source of instant gratification, because then we'd constantly be looking to get the next new thing or app or bag or clothes just to feel better. Uh, Najwa also, also makes it a point to clarify that the self that we are accepting should be our genuine, authentic self, not necessarily what society or the environment has molded us to be. The second chapter is on self-love. In our home, self-love is a major room that we have to visit every single day, especially when we've grown used to self-hate. The best way she puts this is, and I'm going to quote the book, is when she says, self-love is loving yourself exactly as you'd love the person you love the most. And that love actually feels like love and looks like meeting your own needs. 
Another quote that uh, is really piercing in its truth is when she says, giving is noble, loving is noble, but not if you aren't included in that giving and loving. Uh, Nedra shares tools by which an empath can self-love and actively protect that empathy that is basically their gift uh, from being depleted. Uh, self-love also means being our authentic self, meaning not acting or self-betraying just so that we can get uh, other people's uh, you know, welcome or approval. It means treating ourselves with empathy, not judgment, and talking to ourselves with love. Najwa teaches us that we need to be open to receiving love and seeing love all around us by noticing the small things that are basically mini actions of love. Uh, in her words, your ability to see, receive, and accept love from others is a healthy sign of you actually loving yourself. But that's not saying that you should rely on external sources of validation, but rather believe that you are worthy of that love um, and that that worth should basically stem from within. Self-love is also about creating boundaries for yourself, which means protecting what is valuable within you from a place of at-homeness uh, and not self-defense. Uh, it's about sitting with all the emotions, you know, the good and the bad, and letting them, letting them go when it's time. It's about taking our own power and not putting our homes in other people. Uh, this next quote I'm going to read basically just sums it up wonderfully. Once we stop evaluating the worth of our love by who receives it or whether it's received at all or the type of reaction that we get as a result of giving it, that's when we can see the worth of our love on our own, in our own home. The third chapter talks about forgiveness. Uh, Najwa shows us that forgiving others is really essentially for our own peace and ourselves. Because once we feel the pain and then make a conscious decision to let it go, we are then exercising our own power, our responsibility alone. The person who caused us the pain cannot fix the pain, even by apologizing. We are the ones who have to face ourselves, face the pain, why we went through it, and then decide to let it go after it has overstayed its welcome. An integral part of forgiveness is also forgiving yourself for not knowing better and accepting whatever happened to you without judgment, but rather with an aim to understand yourself and increase your self-awareness. We have to accept that we won't be the same people that we were before the pain and that it's just warped to think that we should go back to being that person. Um, instead, we should focus on our own power to rebuild ourselves. The fourth chapter is on compassion. Compassion towards the world, compassion towards oneself, and compassion from others. We have to learn how to speak to ourselves with compassion and empathy by not belittling our own pain in order to be able to give proper compassion to others. And by proper, I mean from a place of empathy and not superiority. Again, she re revisits the topic of boundaries, which I know is a big one these days. Um, in fact, I've always been under the mistaken impression that boundaries are focused on changing uh, other people's behavior. But it turns out its true focus is actually honoring and valuing what's inside of you. Um, here's the mind-blowing part uh, from the book. When you attach the validity of the boundary to the person's changed behavior, you are stepping into that person's home and defining your worth based on their treatment of you. When you focus the boundary on yourself, your focus shifts from feeling hurt because someone is not giving you the value you think you deserve to seeing that this person is violating the standard of respect you set for yourself. And you say, my worth is not dependent on someone respecting how I want to be treated. She also gives us ways to think of how to set boundaries, uh, like imagining it as a guest list, for example, for those that we want to invite uh, at, our, our home, at our own home for a dinner event that we are hosting. We get to choose who makes it on the guest list. Uh, she also touches on the concept of being able to receive 
from others, even if it's just like a small compliment, we should accept it and say thank you instead of belittle ourselves and resist the compliment because we don't think we are deserving of it. The fifth chapter is on clarity. In particular, seeing ourselves, that is, understanding ourselves clearly as we are, under all the labels and the blur of who society wants us to be, before expecting the world to make us feel seen. Uh, Najwa points out that guilt is normal to feel during the process of deconstructing who we've been, and that it will feel very strange because we're so used to who we've been all this time. Uh, one of the steps towards gaining clarity when in confusion is stepping out of the confusion and seeing it as something that you are experiencing and not who you are. Uh, and once we can put a label on that experience, then we are a step closer to clarity. Purpose and intention are also major tools to use uh, in this room, as well as being in the present. Uh, being in the present would include anything from like removing distractions, uh, like social media, or always being available for people. The sixth chapter is on the room called Surrender. Here, Najwa stresses the importance of surrendering to our emotions, um, of feeling the pain that wants to be heard and seen, as opposed to resisting it, and then just letting it go once you've learned your lesson from it. But then she decides that this surrender also applies to positive emotions, and that the whole point is really to try and understand what we are feeling, acknowledge the feelings without any judgment, face the reality and accept it for what it is. She emphasizes that we should not try to change the ending of how something turned out to be, but to surrender to it and acknowledge that just because of the way it ended doesn't mean you decide that that's how your story ends. It could be a leap into a new story, one which begins with you being at home with yourself. She also shares with us gems from her own experiences such as uh, surrendering to vulnerability as a means of authenticity and connection, and also being open to the unfamiliar. Um, being open to the unfamiliar, I wanna focus on that. So in the context of relationships, for example, when a person has grown up in a broken um, and dysfunctional home uh, and they've been like abandoned or abused all the time, this becomes their familiar, their only familiar pattern. And so, once they grow up, they end up in relationships where they have to beg to stay in someone else's home, metaphorically, because they unconsciously believe that they deserve no better. In such a case, they would probably reject a relationship that gives them unconditional love and stability because it feels scary, it feels unfamiliar and unpredictable to them. Why? Because deep down, they don't believe they are worthy of it. So that's where the surrender comes in. It would be to not resist that love and to welcome and embrace it. Now, the seventh chapter is not exactly a room, but what Najwa calls the dream garden. In it, she tells her story of what she ended up doing uh, while giving us pointers to help us live our dreams, uh, such as unblinding ourselves from limiting beliefs, uh, and what people think or say about us, uh, being original and authentic, starting small, and not being afraid to fail. In the end, she concludes that living our dream should nourish our state of at-homeness with ourselves. All in all, it's a profoundly powerful book in the self-help genre. I think that Najwa has truly made her mark by opening her heart out to us and extracting the gems that she so generously and eloquently shares with us. I definitely won't be putting this book away on a shelf to collect dust. Um, I'm going to make it a habit to go back to it whenever I feel lost or untethered uh, to help me find my way home back to myself. I'd give this book a five stars. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye.